In Lesson 12.1, you will define and use sequences and series. A sequence is a function whose domain is a set of consecutive integers. If a domain is not specified, it is understood that the domain starts with 1. So in our first example, we want to write the first six terms of this sequence. To do that, we make a table of values, and n is going to be our input or our domain, and a sub n is our output or our range. So our first six n values or domain values are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now when I find my first term in this sequence, I'll let n equal 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. I'll let n equal 2. 5 minus 2 gives me the second term in this sequence. I'll let n equal 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. That's the third term in this sequence. When I let n equal 4, 5 minus 4 is 1. I'll let n equal 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. And let n equal 6. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So there are the first six terms of this sequence. This is a finite sequence because it has a countable number of terms. Okay, in our next uh, problem, we're going to make a table of values again to write the first six terms of this sequence. n is our input or domain, and f of n is the notation they're using in this uh, equation, it's function notation. Our n values again are going to start with 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And to find the members of this sequence, the first member will let n equal 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And then we'll let n equal 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 1 third to the first power is negative 1 third. We'll let n equal 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 1 third squared or multiplied to itself is going to give us positive 1 ninth. Let n equal 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. We're raising negative 1 third to the third power. That's an odd number of negative factors, so our product's going to be negative. And negative 1 third to itself three times is negative 1 27th. Letting n equal 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Negative 1 third to the fourth power is going to be a positive product because we have an even number of negative factors. And negative 1 third times negative 1 third is positive 1 ninth, so 1 ninth times 1 ninth is going to give us 1 81st. Okay, let n equal 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. Negative 1 third to the fifth power. Again, that's an odd number of factors, so our product's going to be negative. And negative 1 third times itself 5 times is 1 over 243. So there's the six terms of this finite sequence. Here's a couple infinite sequences. They go on and on forever. And what we want to do is describe the pattern that we see, write the next term, and write a rule for the nth term. So looking at this first problem, I see that the numerator is constant. 2 is the numerator in each fraction. Okay, 5, there's a new factor of 5 in every denominator. So I could write that first denominator as 5 to the first power. Second fraction, 2 over 5 to the second power. Third fraction could be written as 2 over 5 to the third power. And the fourth fraction, 2 over 5 to the fourth power. So that means the next term in this sequence is 2 over 5 to the fifth power, or that's equal to 2 over 5 to the fifth power is 3,125. So we described the pattern, and we found the next term in the sequence, and now we want to write a rule for the nth term. So all we have to do is put 2 in the numerator, and in the denominator, we would raise 5 to the nth power each time to get each new term in that sequence. Okay, let's try it in problem 2. 
In problem two, what we have is consecutive odd integers starting with three. So I could write odd integers as two times one plus one, that would give me three. Two times two plus one, that would give me five. Two times two, uh, I'm sorry, two times three plus one, that would give me seven. And one more, two times four plus one, that would give me nine. So I know the next term in this sequence is gonna be two times five plus one. And that's equal to 11. Okay, so we described the pattern and we found the next term in the sequence again, and now we need a, a rule for the nth term. So each time we're multiplying two to the next n value and adding one. So there's a rule for any term in that sequence. And remember, it's an infinite sequence. It's gonna go on and on forever. Okay, here we want to graph the sequence 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. It, it's written as a finite sequence here. And our n values are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Because the terms in this sequence, a sub n, are 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. So when we graph, we'll let the horizontal axis be our n values, and the vertical axes are a sub n values. So the first term in this sequence that I graph is 1, 3. The second term is 2, 5. The third term is 3, 7. The fourth term is 4, 9. And the final term is 511. I'm going to approximate that position. So that's all we have to do to graph the terms of a sequence. Okay, when the terms of a sequence are added together, the resulting expression is called a series. And a series can also be finite or infinite. Here we want to write each series using summation notation or sigma notation. So the first series that we're looking at is a finite series. It has a countable number of terms. And if I look for a pattern in this series, this um, sum of a sequence, terms of a sequence, I see that there's a factor of four in every term. Four times one would give me that first term. 4 times 2 would give me the second term. 4 times 3 would give me the third term. So all the way out to the last term in this sequence, 4 times 25 would give me 100. So using sigma notation or summation notation, I could say that this is the sum as i goes from 1 to 25 of 4i. Each term in this series can be expressed by 4i. 4 times an integer. Okay, in the next problem, problem 2, since I have three fractions in this series, I'm going to create uh, the first uh, term as a fraction by writing 2 over 1. And now look for that pattern. In the numerator, we've got 1 plus 1. In the next numerator, we have 1 plus 2. In the next numerator, 1 plus 3. And then in the fourth numerator, 1 plus 4. That's the pattern that I see. And in the denominator, 1, 4, 9, and 16, those are perfect squares. First one is 1 squared, 
the next one is 2 squared, the next one is 3 squared, and the fourth one is 4 squared, and so on. This is an infinite series, but we can express it with sigma notation or summation notation as well. It's the sum as i goes from 1 to infinity of i plus 1 in the numerator over i squared in the denominator. Here we're going to go the other direction. We want to find the sum of the series. The series is given using sigma notation or summation notation. So to find the sum, we would just find each term in this series. So I'd find the first term by putting 3 in for k. And you might notice that k is our index in this notation. It doesn't matter what letter of the alphabet we use as our index in summation notation, but usually i is used. And again, in this case, k is used. So I'm going to put 3 in for k. 3 squared is 9. So in that first term, I have 9 minus 1, which is 8. Then I'm going to put 4 in for k. 4 squared is 16, and 16 minus 1 is 15. Then I'll put 5 in for k. 5 squared is 25, and 25 minus 1 is 24. Now I need to put in 6. 6 squared is 36, and 36 minus 1 is 35. And the last one putting 7 in for k, 7 squared is 49, and 49 minus 1 is 48. So now I'll have to do, this is the series, 8 plus 15 plus 24 plus 35 plus 48, and all I have to do to get the sum is to add these terms together. So it looks like 13, 17, 22, 30, carry a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13. So I'm getting a sum of 130 for that series. Now in the second uh, series, the sum summation notation uh, is a, the sum of the first 11 positive integers. We have a special formula for that series that we can use. If we have the sum of the first n positive integers, all we have to do to find that sum is use this formula. And n is 11, so I would have 11 times 11 plus 1 over 2. Or I'd have 11 times 12 over 2. And I know that 2 goes into 12 6 times, so it's really 6 times 11, or 66 is the sum of that series. So I don't actually have to write the series. I don't have to write 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way out to 11. I can just recognize that we're adding the first n positive integers, the first 11, and then use the formula for that special series. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 2 through 12 even on pages 794 through 797 of your textbook.